Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Measuring My Current State presentation, Jesus has a brief discussion with the audience about using the emotions and feelings about the four tools of faith, truth, action, and humility to measure the current state of the personal progression. Recorded on the 8th of June, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. So you could say this is your additional group feedback session now. You've just got yourself another feedback session. Now, I did have this conversation with the first group as well, but not in this session. It was in a group feedback. But uh, I thought, well, probably better to put it here if we're not going to ask questions about the appropriate subject. So what we're going to discuss now is measuring my current state. How do I measure my current state? Good question. Yeah. It's really easy. Yeah. When you're aware, it's really easy, right? What are your tools? Faith. So these are my tools. So faith, truth, truth right? Action and emotion or humility, right? Let's write it down as emotion. They are my tools. Okay. The way to measure where you're at in terms of your current state is to measure how you feel, truthfully feel, about those four things. You could also add a few more things to that, how you truthfully feel about love as well could be added to that. So how do I truthfully feel about those five things? Now, let's, let's give you some examples. Many of you believe you have faith. You're not quite sure how much you have, but if you want to measure how much faith you have, when it comes to dealing with your terror, have you dealt with it yet? So there's not enough faith to deal with your terror yet. So that tells me I'm up here somewhere, doesn't it? In my progress. Okay. How do I feel about truth? When I share with you a personal truth, what's the general reaction? Usually it's, Fear or anger or denial. So where does that tell you you're at? You've got to be up here in, for that, doesn't it? If you, you think about it, if I really loved it, like I you know, just loved it, like, like eating a lovely meal, where would it probably be then with truth? Probably be underneath the terror, wouldn't I? Probably would have dealt with my terror by now. Because when you have that kind of thirst for truth, nothing can stop you. Uh, nothing can stop you from wanting to know, particularly wanting to know things about yourself. Yeah. Okay, if I feel like um, there are times when I just re really just like to not do anything, or I continue to take actions that are based on my addictions, and I feel that that's the right thing to do, where am I at? <coughs> Obviously, I'm up here in this section. Right. When it comes to emotion, if I feel upset with myself every time I realise a new thing, where am I at? I'm obviously not accepted my facade yet. Does that make sense? If I get upset every th new thing I discover about myself, then I haven't... If I get upset with truth and I get upset about every new thing and I punish myself for every new thing I've discovered, then I'm obviously not even accepted my facade yet. Does that make sense? If I believe things about that love is a bartering system, if I feel that, where am I at? Probably up here still, right? If I believe love is a gift and I act like love is a gift, in other words, I give my gift of love to other people, not expecting anything in return, where do you think I am then? 
probably right down here somewhere, right? Yeah, in terms of addressing things. So the answer to the question of how to measure my current state is quite simple. I measure how I feel about these five things. Eloisa? This means that on different um, emotions, different things, I can be in different places all that at once. Dead right. You can. All right. Yeah, you can. So, so if I give you an example for your own life, be great. when it comes to addressing some personal issues about your children, yep. you, you are hungry for truth there, right, aren't yeah, you? Different. All the time. Different. But you're still a bit self-attacking, so that means yep. you still haven't fully accepted your facade. facade. Yep. Still a bit self-attacking. But there's times when you've even processed your pain sometimes. Yeah. with different ones so yeah. in those ones you've accepted your facade there yeah and you've got to your pain even right right yep. Yep. and you've gone through some terror to obviously you're still bypassing your terror because yep. you haven't felt that yet <laughs> no. still trying to bypass your terror to get there i am but you, ha you are aware of some of your pain is probably a better way of saying it yeah yep, yep. does that make awesome. sense yep. cool thanks yeah any other questions you'd like to ask about that so that was seven minute session. I would just <laughs> Sandra, what would you like to ask? So um so you know how Louisa just said you can be at different places at different times. So that means at times you're feeling some pain come through on issues that are that you have realized you've got a facade in those moments. Is that what that means? No, when you once you deal with your facade on a certain issue, an awareness of your pain begins to occur. That creating that issue you're probably not going to feel your pain to the full extent because you need to get through this global terror first before you're going to really feel any emotion properly does that make sense but but your awareness of the pain is there yeah and if something changes in your life like the way you for example felt about a person or interacted with them and it changes completely does that is that an indication of growth at all well, it depends how you've changed. If you've changed and now you're angry with them and you like to murder them, <laughs> in a in a positive direction. Like if you've been you. avoiding someone completely, and then yeah. all of a sudden, like you've felt something and you have a different relationship where you can talk to them now. And well, it only means that you've changed towards that person. Okay. So, for example, if if you have an issue with your mother, let's say, and you deal with a little bit of it, and then you find one woman is more accessible to you in your you know in your relationships than what she was before then that obviously indicates that that woman probably had just that one issue with your mother same issue as your mother did but it doesn't mean you've dealt with your mother issues no. does it it only no. means you've dealt with one but it when uh, something changes with all women yes then obviously that's a bigger indication isn't it that something's yes. been addressed you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's so like the multiple emotions. The what are they called? What did you call them? Sorry. Um, well, no. Uh, now you're getting now. No, because uh, no, you no. could have many multiple emotions addressed with one person, particularly your mother. Mm -hmm. Most of you are going to have an intense amount of emotions uh, with uh, to address with your mothers. Because remember, years ago I said to you in the talk about um, what was it called the the mother taboo. Taboo. Yeah. Yeah. In that talk, I mentioned to you that actually most of your injuries come from your mother. In today's Western society, that's going to be the case because it's mostly mothers who look after children. The fathers are usually off at work and so forth, and so they, there's usually a lot less injuries associated with fathers and mothers. If, you, if somebody's with you 90% of the time, then they're going to have caused 90% of your facade and 90% of your injuries. Does that make sense? unless they are in a state of love, which we've established is not the case uh, on planet normally. So, so yeah, it's, it just depends on the issue. The reason why you're asking these questions is? Because I don't trust that, yeah, I don't know, maybe because I, I feel like I want to be there <laughs> where the pain is, where I'm really in facade emotions. Yeah, you, yep. you, want, you want to be told everything's better than what you think it possibly is. <laughs> yes. So my suggestion would be to feel what you think it is rather than asking for somebody like myself to feed an addiction that, that you actually have. So I probably should show you this, okay. <laughs> this one. Enough.
because that's <laughs> what you comes out. <laughs> that's yeah. what you just did. You <laughs> asked a question based on addiction. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That makes sense. Helga, thanks. Thank you. So where we are, our current state not being linear. Yep. Is global terror uh, to be processed in one entire lump, or is it possible that you can, like, you know, process it in smaller pieces? And well, um, not really, not but really. most of you try. <laughs> okay. So the, rea the reality is that most of you touch the terror. You might give yourself a few minutes with it, sometimes even just a few seconds with it, and and if you do it like that, it's going to take you like hundreds of years to address okay does that make sense yes so we we often with most emotions try to address them piecemeal and and what we call it is that's all i can manage now the problem with that is that when it gets to this terror you're going to have to go beyond what you can think you think you're capable of managing mm -hmm. that's the point of it that's why it's terror you understand it's going to be beyond what you believe you're capable of managing Okay. And, uh, and unless you do that, you won't be beyond the terror. Now, my suggestion is to allow that process to occur, yes. to allow the terror to be released. But the majority of you will touch it, and feel a little bit of it, run away, come back again, run away. Some of you will run away. Uh, there was a lovely question in the first group where Rani, Rani sat down at the front with me, so it would be worth having a look at that question because uh, we talked about how she was feeling like she wanted to... She, she started touching it in the last group, so two years ago, and then for the next two years she's just run away. And she, she asked, well, what can I do about that? And that's all about the will to stay there, you know, developing an aspiration and then your will to stay in the emotion and, and to feel it f to the end. Now, if you don't do that and you keep touching, 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 you're always reinforcing to yourself that you're not capable of dealing with the whole lot of it. So the problem with touching something over and over and over again is that you actually are teaching yourself that you can't cope with the full amount. And you're also teaching, you're also not trusting God, because if you trusted God, you would deal with the full amount. So this tells you, so if you do touch it once and then run away, my suggestion is look at your resistances. The first resistance being... Resistance to faith in God and resistance to the way God's created you. Resistance to the fact that God created you to feel emotion and so therefore you're capable of feeling everything. And some false beliefs you have about terror, about the fact that it feels unbearable and things like that. You'd have to develop some aspirations to work your way through those things emotionally. It's pointless going, touching it, coming away, touching it, going away, touching it, going away without addressing anything because all that does is re reinforce to you that you're never going to be able to cope with it. Does that make sense? Yes. And I feel that's happened to a few of you where you've touched it once or twice and, and then you feel like I'm never going to handle that so I'm, I'm, I'm not dealing with that <laughs> yes. type of thing. And it's very damaging to reinforce a lack of faith in your soul. Yes. So when you notice your lack of faith, my suggestion is to start addressing the issue as a lack of faith. And a lack of faith in God, in the process, in the way God created you, in your soul, lack of faith in the emotions being the process. So this is where when most people go, no, receiving God's love is not about emotions. You know, let's, let's make it about something else other than that. Mm. You know, this is where most people go in that place. So, yeah, you've got to be very careful, Helga. It's like, so my, my suggestion is when you touch it once and you run away, try to address with the, all the reasons why you ran away mm -hmm. before, yes. you t before you go into it again. Now, you're not going to be able to address them all probably, but at least if you can address a lot of them, it will help you stay in it next time much longer and you'll be able to measure that it's progress then and then you'll have more faith. But if you keep just touching at the same amount every time and running away, can you see you're not developing faith? In fact, if anything, you're attacking your own faith because you're basically reinforcing to yourself that you're not going to cope, yes. which is not actually true. God created you to handle anything emotionally. Yes. So we've just got to be careful that we don't reinforce false beliefs by our actions.
Thank you. Forcing out, uh, forcing via willpower to get something done. Yes. So you remember, you remember if if uh, if I go to touch my terror and then I step back from it, that's an indication my will is yet developed to go through it. Hmm. So I'd be better off addressing why my will is yet developed to go through it and looking at the false beliefs I have than I am to actually try to force myself through it using willpower. Because willpower is not going to get me through it. It's, it's our will, feeling, emotion that's going to get us through it. Yes, so yeah. when I... If you just hold the mic more straight. Oh, sorry. Um, so people who are rather obviously and self-admittedly still in facade but also claim at the same time that they have released pain and I was wondering how did they get through the no. terror? No, they're releasing pain up here. Okay. The pain associated with addictions and frequently what they call pain is actually self-delusion. Okay. So, you know, yes, I haven't seen too many people who say they're releasing pain who have actually released pain. Okay. You know, they, they're actually releasing... Well, well, they're not even releasing self-delusion emotions. They're actually living in them. And, and why do we do that? Well, it's obvious because it reinforces the facade and tells us that we're good and we're getting something done and everything's great and we don't have to worry. You know, we do that for those reasons. Yeah. It's Thank far you. better, to be honest. Because I've seen many people in so total self-delusion for years and years and not got anywhere, actually. And in fact, if anything, they've established a greater bond with the negative spirits around them than they have ever had before through their self-delusion. So it's very, you know, it's, we've got to be careful of that. That's up in this place here, right, that we do that. In other words, we're now swapping our addictions from our physical addictions or emotional addictions with people with just uh, emotional addictions with some spirits. So being in, an, being in a non-linear state like all over the place does not include we can be up there and down there. No, but you, honestly, to get to this pain properly, you're going to have to have felt that first. Yeah, it's that's what I meant with, you know, how do you filter through the terror if you can... You'll be able to touch the pains sometimes through the terror, you know, you'll be able to see they're there, you'll be able to be aware they're there to a degree, intellectually at least, but when it comes to your soul, you're not going to process it until you've released your terror. Hmm, just that's not. What I thought. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And, you. and you've got to give up this whole thing as uh, wanting to be somewhere that you're not. You know, a person who's truly accepted their facade doesn't do that. They, they know where they're at. You know, you don't. A person who's truly accepted their facade can measure where they're at using the techniques that I've just shown you. And, and they know where they're at, so they don't have to ask anybody. They just know this is where I'm at, this is where I'm at. And they don't punish themselves for being there. Uh, many of you have done that. You see where you're at and then you punish yourself. It's no wonder you don't want to see where you're at. If you're going to punish yourself every time, it's sort of like, sort of like I'm going to be honest with myself, so I'm honest with myself. And then I go, you naughty boy for being, you know, for being there. Like, uh, that's like uh, being honest in your childhood and the parent coming along and giving you a belt in for it. That's all you're doing to yourself. And, and it's not very compassionate to the facade, is it? The, the, you remember the facade has been created through a lot of very damaging, hurtful processes. Like I said to Chris yesterday, there's a lot of cruelty and, and you know, torturous events have occurred in that place. And we need to have some comp a, a lot more compassion for it than we actually have. Now, getting compassion for it is a lot about accepting truth without judgment. That's what it's all about, accepting truth without judgment. And so accepting our facade is all about accepting truth about ourselves without judging what we've accepted about ourselves, without going, oh, you know, you know you're a naughty person, you shouldn't have that, oh, you have that, you know, and terror, terror, terrorising yourself, really. All you're really doing in that place is doing the same thing that happened in your childhood whenever truth was present. Not a, not a good thing to do. Yep. Thank you. If we come to Laura on this side and Julie on this side. So Laura first. Um, today, Fab said to me that I'm um, judging my facade. Yeah. And I said, no. I'm not attacking myself. And he said, no, you're not attacking yourself. You're judging yourself. And I don't know the difference. Well, I think you're attacking yourself. But anyway, so I'd even go further than Fab. 
um, I feel you, you attack yourself frequently. Yes, I, yeah, but if I the, – the flavour between judging – can you judge without attacking? Can you attack without judging is probably the real question. Okay. <laughs> if you are attacking yourself, you're definitely judging yourself. If I'm, if I'm attacking myself – And if you're judging yourself, self? that is an attack of self. <gasps> okay. Like if I judge you, isn't it an attack of you? Just my judgment of you, isn't, an, isn't it an attack of you? Yeah. Don't you feel attacked if somebody judges you? Surely you do. So just judging yourself is an attack. It is the attack. Yeah. It's going to control what you now do about it. So this is why frequently you're, in, you're clueless about your facade because you're too busy trying to you know, deny you have it because every time you see that you have it, you judge yourself for having it and you punish yourself for having it and you pity yourself for having it and you, you know, blame yourself for having it. And all of that is just like belting yourself up for having it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just thought that because I didn't feel how badly it was that it wasn't there, but it's just different gradients of attack, but it's still any judgment is an attack. Yeah. Right. Okay. In the first century, I said, it's better for you to be have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into the sea than it is for you to judge someone. Why did I say that? That's how serious judgment is from God's perspective. It's a, it's a great degradation of another person's character and nature. Right. It's a, ter a terrible thing. You're, you're basically saying you're superior to the other person when you judge. Now, in this case, when you judge yourself, you're basically saying you're inferior. Aren't you? Yeah, constantly. Basic, breaking God's law immediately. Yep. And like I said, in the first century, judgment is one of the, you know, it's a serious problem because it, it's like when you, when you judge, you limit people. You limit them in their expression of their will and their power. By judging them, that's how. That's what. That's the purpose of judgment, is isn't it? To control. That's the purpose of it. So when you judge yourself, the purpose of it is to control yourself, to stop being you, who you really are and start being someone different. Isn't that one of the motivations of the facade itself? So it's such a terrible emotion to judge yourself. Most people, when we talk about judgment, don't realise the seriousness of the sin you're creating, even when you judge yourself. So can I ask another one? Sure, you can. Because I did ask it for the personal truth, but it's just this question. Yep. So judgment is um, covers the addiction underneath it. Before you ask anything more, can I say oh, that okay, we're so really now getting away from this topic? Yes. <laughs> Do you want to stay on this topic or get away? Were you uh, the topic is covered? Yes. You understand how to measure yourself? Yeah. <laughs> well, does there need to be more? Like, isn't it quite plain? Yeah. Pretty easy, isn't it? How do you feel? Remember, it's about how you feel about those things, not about what you think about them, but how you f really feel about them. That's all you've got to do, measure how you feel. See, you, if you can measure how you feel at all, you know, when I first started, I couldn't do that. So you have to first get emotionally sensitive to do that. But once you're emotionally sensitive, you measure how you feel about these things, it tells you where you're at. Quite simple.